shoulder joint position sense, evaluation, and retraining. Let's talk about body awareness and proprioception. Infants can't make precise finger or shoulder movements. We may safely say they have no awareness of their hands or shoulders yet. Once they learn the movements, they develop the body awareness. On the same note, some individuals with persistent shoulder pain and disability are unable to make precise shoulder movements. Therefore, we may safely say they have reduced awareness of their shoulders. Similar to an infant, once they learn precise shoulder movements, they develop the body awareness. The Joint Position Sense, or JPS, provides the body with information about its position and direction of movement in space without visual control. This is essential if you're a professional volleyball player, if you're a baseball pitcher, or you're a senior reaching for the top shelf to get a can. There are studies that support the hypothesis that proprioception or JPS are affected in individuals with shoulder instability. As you can see, such as with the positive uh, gap test. The laser point assisted angle reproduction test or LPART has been shown to be a potentially clinically applicable test showing some validity. The LPART requires the patient to memorize various joint positions with eyes open. Then, with the eyes closed, they're asked to reproduce the same joint positions as before. To evaluate shoulder JPS, a laser pointer, which is part of the StarMat package, is taped to the patient's distal forearm or proximal to the wrist, as you can see on the image on the right-hand side. Step number one. The patient stands on the center red footprints of the star mat, which is 100 centimeters from the star mat wall target. Step number two, the patient is asked to stand up tall and position and raise or flex their affected shoulder to approximately 90 degrees. Step number three, then they're to close their eyes and remain still while the laser is turned on and adjusted so the beam is positioned in the center of the target as accurately as possible. And this is done by the therapist. Step number four. With the eyes still closed, they're requested to slowly raise their arms straight up as far as comfortable and then slowly return back to the 90 degree shoulder position as accurately as possible. When they return, the new position of the laser beam is noted and the patient is asked to open their eyes, and the patient is surprised to see either they're very accurate or that they're off by quite a bit. The distance between the new position of the laser beam and the center of the target is measured, or in our situation, it's just estimated. The test is repeated another two times, and the average of three trials is the outcome. Basically, we just determine if it's good or if they're not good in their JPS. Step number four and five are repeated for shoulder extension, which is to six o'clock, to horizontal abduction, which is to three o'clock, and horizontal adduction, which is to nine o'clock. So what is normal? Well, if they're inside the center of the red target, zero to four centimeters of error, it's considered excellent, as you can see in the image on the right, which doesn't always happen. But if they're within the first gray zone, or 48 centimeters error, that's considered good. And if they're within the second red zone, 8 to 12 centimeters error, that's considered fair or normal, which is the most common scenario. However, if they're anywhere outside the second red zone, which means greater than 12 centimeters of error, that is considered poor, as you can see on the image on the right. However, if they're anywhere outside the target zone, greater than 16 centimeters error, that can be considered very poor. And that can be seen in individuals after shoulder dislocations, shoulder surgeries, or persistent shoulder pain. Now there's advanced shoulder JPS evaluation method that is a level higher than the one we just reviewed. Step number one, to familiarize the patient with the clock pattern, Ask them to use the laser beam to slowly trace the 12 clock lines with their eyes open and as accurately along the line as possible. For example, you say go to 1 o'clock, come back to the center again. Go to 2 o'clock, come back slowly to the center again. And so on. 
Step number two, ask the patient to now close their eyes and move their shoulder towards a specific number on the clock and return to the center again. Example, slowly move your shoulder to one o'clock and return back to the center. And you can see on the image on the right, they are unlikely to be exactly on the line if their eyes are closed. The degree of error can be easily observed during the exercise and is noticed. If they're off by less than five degrees, that's considered excellent. You can see it on the image on the right. If they're off by five to 10 degrees, that's considered good. If they're off by 10 to 15 degrees, that's considered fair. However, if they're off by more than 15 degrees, that's considered really poor, as you can see on the image on the right, which means they're way off the one o'clock mark that they were supposed to go. And then you can repeat this for uh, five o'clock, then you can repeat it for 11 o'clock. In a healthy population, there's no, no significant differences in shoulder JPS has been found between dominant and non-dominant shoulders and between men and women. So the study below has actually come up with normative data. Again, there's no difference between right hand or left hand and between men and women. Now shoulder JPS home program can be done with no laser beam and or star mat. It uses, all the patient has to do is they simply have to close their eyes and consciously, with full awareness, move the shoulder in the clock pattern, the 12 directions, several times a day. For example, you get them to reach for one o'clock, then bring their hand back to the center, for example, to their sternum or their chest, and then reach to two o'clock, come back to the sternum, go to three o'clock, come back to the sternum, and so on. And this is done with their eyes closed, where you really need to be aware of your position in space. This can be done anywhere where there's enough room for arm movement. This exercise should ideally be prescribed to anyone with acute to persistent traumatic shoulder pain. Example, after a fall, dislocation, or post-surgery. The conscious movements may help minimize the loss of proprioception and potential somatosensory cortex reorganization. Here are some more exercises. With eyes closed, Raise the unaffected shoulder to say 45 degrees and then raise the affected shoulder to the same level as accurately as possible. Then open your eyes and see how, how accurate you were. This is just a fun game and I refer to it as mirror games. So these are shoulder JPS mirror and clock games. Look at the left hand image. With eyes closed, lift the unaffected arm up to say 145 degrees. Then lift the other arm to match the angle. Go ahead, try it right now. Do all this with eyes closed. Now, with the eyes closed, externally rotate the unaffected arm to say 80 degrees and externally rotate the other arm to closely match the angle. Can you close your eyes and do this right now? So take one arm to external rotation 80 degrees and then slowly move the other arm to match it. Once you're there, open your eyes and see how accurate you were. And if you were close or off, it doesn't matter. It's the action of doing it that matters. Now look at the image on the right hand side. With eyes closed, make a clock pattern with the affected arm and have the other fist represent the center of the clock. So you bring your fist to one o'clock and then bring it back to the center, which is close to your chest. And then go to two o'clock and then bring the arm back to the center of the chest. And then so on for the all 12 directions. The laser point assisted angle may be an effective method of evaluating and training shoulder proprioception or joint position sets. Also, potentially improving tactile acuity and cortical re 